Hi, everybody. I have a guest today. This is going to be so much fun. This is Adrian Hill, who's a very good friend of mine, and she's Canadian, so she's very nice. So <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> I tend to giggle a lot. That's, that's she, she's she's really great. I think you're gonna fall in love with her. She's 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 been a really good friend of mine. And um psychics are not really her thing. I mean, she loves the spiritualism idea of you know ghosts and hauntings and all that stuff. She loves all that stuff. Uh, she's an expert on Tourette's syndrome. She is an expert on a lot of things, but this isn't necessarily her thing. So I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to try something new. Okay. Mm -hmm. So say hello to everybody, Adrian. How's everyone doing? Hello. Isn't she great? Okay. okay. <laughs> she's gonna, she, okay. So we're going to get a little, okay. So what we're going to do today, this is one of my normal videos of sort. We're going to be focusing on Thomas John today. Now, Adrian doesn't know anything. Okay. So. This is new to her. This is a Friday night. And she says, hey, Adrian, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be kind of fun. So I'm going to show you a video. Okay. This is recorded in 2022, October 25th. It is a, a morning TV show. It's called Fox 2. And it's in Detroit. And this is a, a, a TV I would call it like you know they're inner they're you know the, the morning shows get to be like all fluffy and everything you know like oh look we have somebody coming in who's going to talk about bunny rabbits today or something like that you know it's just a like on your morning commute it's not like the harsh news of the day it's it's just like happiness and rainbows you know you guys get those in canada right yeah yeah, it's not going to be hard breaking news. If you want breaking news, you're going to go to another site that's going to say, here's the news today. Right. You know, they say it with a really stern face. But this is just like, hey, everybody, have a great day. So Thomas John has been in this program multiple times. And I'm not going to play every bit of this reading because it's it's seven minutes long. And that will take us 70 minutes to get through. <laughs> so I'm going to mention a few things. And and. And then I'm going to just explain what's going on to Adrian, and she can just give her own, like, oh, whatever she wants to say. I mean, if she thinks that this is a big deal or she thinks it's not or I don't know, whatever she's going to say. So um, people watching out there, hello in YouTube land, please subscribe if you get a chance because it's right right there, right? Okay. The like really hit, the, hit, the, hit the like button and the little alarm that goes ding. All right, so sound is on. Let's hope. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear this. Okay, once I turn it on, Adrian. Okay, so first thing I'm going to show you is just very brief, very, very brief, like 10 seconds. Back with psychic medium Thomas John. Before we move forward, uh, the Paramount Plus show, very successful. Are we going to get another season of that? We're working on that. I hope so, yeah. I mean, I've been talking to different things about different things. With COVID, everything sort of like ended. <laughs> 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 Okay, so the first thing I want to mention, do you have any thoughts on that, Adrian, before I say anything? I just have to chuckle because I don't think he saw COVID coming, did he? That his no. show was going to be impacted by... He completely missed it, as, as did all psychics. <laughs> yep, as we proved in the... And we documented Australian that. No. Psychic Prediction Project. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You were involved in the Australian yeah. Psychic Prediction Project. We'll have to have you back on and, and some of the other people are on that and talk to, about it to the to the audience because yeah, but that's know, very that's different a... from what you're doing here, I think, is because we were just looking at predictions and judging whether they happened. And this is a little over different. 21 years. Mm -hmm, over 21 it was years. So interesting, you guys. Really this is a little different, different but it, it, it's the same idea. Okay. So he didn't predict COVID. And they're just flipping about it. I just don't understand the, how the how the news media just thinks this is all like a joke, right? Yeah. They do. They just laugh. <laughs> you didn't predict COVID. <laughs> We're just going to talk to dead people now. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it. And the thing about it is, is I don't know if they do believe it, but you well, know, they, they act like it, you know. So yeah. like, yeah. yes, we're going to talk to dead people now. I'm ready. It's just like, you know, it's a joke. It's a big joke to them, but with what, what they don't understand and what they don't what they don't seem to get or the networks don't get is that these people are grieving. These people who write to me and the people I see these posts on, 
they're not, they don't think it's a joke and they're upset and they're, and, and when they find out they've been conned, it's just awful. It's ugly as heck. These people are not, they don't think it's funny. Well, I think a lot of people think, well, what's the harm? It's just entertainment. Yeah. I get that a lot. Mm-hmm. I think in a way that makes sense, they say, well, you know, it's just fun. You know, it's like going to a psychic and getting at a party or something. And that could be fun. Yeah. But, but whatever they start thought- talking to the dead. Yeah. Yeah. And I always thought that's what that whole thing was. I always, because of my upbringing, et cetera, I thought people just went because it was entertaining and they're really good at reading people for whatever reason. I didn't know how they did it, but I mm-hmm. never thought that it was real. And you so thought I, it was a trick. Right? I, I thought, oh, I thought it was a trick and I thought it was for entertainment. I didn't realize until I got into this movement that people actually took it seriously and were hurt pretty mm-hmm. badly for, from it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're, you're probably like a, a, a huge chunk of the, mm. of the world. They yeah. just don't get that this is taken seriously. Yeah. And I don't, I get, yeah. I don't know if you read, maybe this is a little off topic, but the Bob Nygaard have posted today mm. that I can't remember where it was, but there's a police department that caught a psychic that scammed somebody out of almost $50,000 over three years and i haven't read that he's yeah. they've got many yeah this is breaking news for him so i was really happy to see that and there's that harm right they, they took a lot of money and and she the, it was um i guess a standard way of doing it where they said well you're you have a curse and the only way yeah. to get rid of it is we put money on a mantle and then you have to have this really expensive tablecloth and you have to put it in a candles and put something under yeah, your candles and you have to have a purse Hello. that's a designer purse that cost eight thousand dollars or something like that and then the person disappears and they disappear with the money bob uh, nygar is an expert at, at that is his like niche is mm-hmm. that world and the psychics that i've been working with are more the tv psychics they don't do that kind of thing but it is still disappear. it's it's you know i think what it is adrian is that um the the media and uh, the police and the laws don't take this seriously because the people that that the psychics, these people like Thomas John and all the others do, they're taking fifty bucks, a hundred dollars. You know, it's not like fifty thousand dollars. It's 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 peanuts in comparison. But to the people they're taking it from, that hundred dollars is can be a lot of money. Well, I mean, it could be. That, I I can't buy dinner for my kids this week. Yeah. yeah. Well, and not only that, but I think putting them on TV gives them legitimacy as well. Mm -hmm. And then it it makes it easier for people to fall for the con that happens. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's awful. So the other part about this clip I wanted to post is I wanted to mention is that they said, so is there going to be another season of Seatbelt Psychic or whatever Thomas John experience, whatever they name it this time? And he's like, well, we don't know. I've been talking to people and stuff. He said, <laughs> so why don't you know? Well, none of the dead people have clearly told him what's happening. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, how can you not know? Yeah. If, if you, you, you can... here comes the cat. Oh. Oh. So, yeah. So how do you not know? Well, I mean, even if he doesn't know if he's going to have a season coming up, yeah. he should know, am I going to be busy beyond busy next year i mean do i see that my my whole focus is going to be concentrated on some artistic endeavor and i'm going to be spending all my time in hollywood again i mean you know what i mean does he claim that he can read the future does he actually say oh yeah he does predictions interesting yeah he had um let me think um i think in 2018 he had kim jong un doing dying i think he oh, had uh, oj simpson getting remarried um oh yeah it, it, i mean it just this australian prediction project would be like eh, 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 <laughs> about yeah he does predictions you can buy his calendar for wow. his predictions for a year yeah so then there is no excuse for not knowing about yeah, I think he should know. too, if, if, if he's going to have another show you would think and they're laughing about it nobody gets the irony that's yeah. what I mean is they're like hey are you gonna have a new show you aren't oh <laughs> anyway okay so let's get to the good stuff all right now um so what's going to happen is there's these three um 
people. And I have their names here somewhere. So let me just pull up their names because they're, this isn't a show I watch. So I, I'm not like, um, it's not, not watching the, this, yeah, Detroit News. Okay, so let me put this over here so I can, <laughs> Fox News 5 in Detroit. Yeah. I'm, sure. I'm not watching it. So, you know, I'm not up on who's who. All right. So this is another good reason you're here because I don't Everything wants to come up on my screen at once. Normally I would cut in here. Okay. So, oh Lord. You're the expert in saying things, Adrian. So here's the host names. Well, here's well, here's gonna, one of them. You know, my secret is I play it online first. <laughs> well, guess what? You're in, you're gonna have to play it now. So what how would you pronounce okay. these three names? Well, I'm guessing the first one is Ryan Ermani. Moriel or Manny, that's good. And Moriel Lou. Oh, very good. And the other one, the the top. Ah, uh, and oh, I missed one. Did I miss one? Deanna. Oh, Dina? I did. Oh, that's a fun one. Uh, Dina Sentofanti. I'm hoping See, you I you right. do that so much better than I would. I I would really not be able to do that at all. Okay. So Ryan is the first one who's going to get a reading from Thomas John. It's okay. quick. It's like really fast um so what's going to happen he's going to give him this thing now thomas john didn't just wander down the street and somebody said hey come into the studio right now no 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 these he knew he was going to be there so he's got time now we know thomas john hot reads oh he proved it so many times i can't believe how many times i proved it. you know what hot reading is right i do know what hot reading and you is. tell tell the audience what hot reading is okay it's essentially when they know information beforehand about the person and it could be from the internet it could be because they've met them before is that correct Did I absolutely that? and and you i'm glad you mentioned that because he met him before because he says in this program that they've had multiple readings right oh He's been on the show multiple times. So, you know. All right. So he's had previous readings and he knows how it works. He's been on the show in 2017, 2021, and now it's 2022, October. All right. So let me get it to the right part. And Thomas Sean is going to read. First, what he's going to do is he's going to throw out some, some information. Now, I've been watching Thomas Sean for years. Mm -hmm. I know darn well he knows who he got the information from and who he's going to. But what okay. he tends to do is he throws it out there first, like, oh, you know, I'm getting these things and maybe it's going to hit one of you guys. I don't know who it's going to be. Maybe it's the cameraman. I don't know. Somebody, he knows darn well who the target is, but he plays it off. Like, oh, I don't know. I might be this person. I might not be that person. Telling so, a story and maybe possibly get, uh, setting the stage for misses. There are no misses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. even worse. <laughs> yeah, it is, that's an obvious tell. Well, it downplays your, yeah, it does downplay the fact that, you know, I might not get this all right. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting tactic, right? That I may be off or whatever. Yeah, I might be a little off. I don't know. Okay, so let me see here. Hold on a second. I'm... Okay, so let's go right to the first reading that he's going to do. So he's been on for one minute. Here comes the reading. You can see it. Okay. Something. Um, the first thing I do want to say is I do feel, I don't know who this is for, but I definitely feel a grandmother coming through um, <clears throat> who I don't feel you had a very strong physical connection with, okay? But I do feel that she's very connected to you in the afterlife. Hmm. But I don't think, I, I feel that either you didn't know her, okay? Or if you did, it would have been very, very little, okay? And um, she's a very, um, I want to say she's, um, she passed a long time ago. So I'm thinking that it's like maybe when you were a, like a little, per, like a little kid. Um, but she, it's interesting because she's very much around you and stuff. Um, I'm going to describe her. She has dark hair and dark eyes, okay? Um, and um, she's also talking about, I think, um, there, um, she's giving me a G name. She's giving me a G name. Um, or J, but I think it's a G name. And I'm going to tell you, though, I don't think, so you have to think about people that you know that passed a long time ago. I, my 
grandmother's name Your is grandmother? Georgette. Okay. Did oh. she pass a long time ago? Yeah, I did not know her. Okay. She, died, she died before I was born. So I okay, I'm going to stop her right there just so you can go through these. Okay, so first thing you're probably thinking, a G name, a J name, you're thinking what? Common letters of names. Old reading, right? Old reading, yeah. You know, it's typical. Let's throw out like John Edward does. and Yeah. Yeah, same with the whole grandmother thing. Well, yeah, that, that it's highly likely that all three of them have grandparents that have died. Oh, easily, yeah. As as a math person. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're a math girl. She's smart. That's I'm why I have her here, because she's smart. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if somebody watching this for the first time, if they were a little skeptical, they'd say, ah, cold reading. Mm -hmm. that's, that's cold reading right, right there, 101. But I know Thomas John really, really well. He is not cold reading. He, he's awful at cold reading. And, you know, I thought that was odd is that he said of those three people that there's a grandmother who's died years ago mm -hmm. and a G or a J. And of all those people, Ryan picked up on it. Now, do you have a G or a J grandmother, grandmother there, Adrian? Or name something like that? Think I have an M. I have an M. I have, I have an M. A what? An M. I do have, I have an M. An M. Yeah. I have a, uh, what's the other one? You're good at this. <laughs> I have another M. Um, I don't know. She, he came up a pretty quick. You know, I, I don't oh, know. Yeah, two Ms. That's really good. I have two Ms. I have another one that's a W, but she's a step-grandmother because my other one died so young. Mm. So... Yeah. And my in-laws. So I have a question for you. Sure. If he is hot reading, why is he using cold reading techniques? Oh, what a good question. I knew you were here for a reason. <laughs> he does this a lot. Like when he's when he's um, doing a reading and there might be 300 people on a Zoom screen, just for example. Right. And he, he uses these two tactics. One of them is, is where he starts throwing out this thing, a string of... Oh, it's the father, something about New York, something with a, a name like Sin, Sin, Cindy, maybe Cynthia, something like that. And then he goes around and he plays one person off the other. And like two or three people will show up and they'll be like, that could be mine. And then he'll play, do you have this? And they have this. And, and he plays them off each other. And I think he does that because he wants more people in the room to feel like they're getting a reading. And like they somebody got attention. And he'll say, oh, well, maybe I'll come back to you. He never goes back to him. Oh, interesting. And then other times, other times, even in the same sitting, he'll he'll go, okay, I'm I'm going to pull up this person right here. And he'll pull up one person on Zoom because I'm feeling something really strong about them. And then he hot reads them right then. So he does both. Right. And I don't want, I wonder if it's a time thing because the thing he's doing right now is very time consuming. Right. This is very time consuming. Could now, it also be expectations that this is what others do that because others have seen hmm. the cold reading, there's an expectation that this is what a reading will look like. You know, I don't know because he's doing both. And I, this is pretty typical of both. But like I said, this tends to start out, this is starting out like a cold reading, but I know it's not. And it's going to quickly change into a hot reading so so here we go now he, like i said he knows who these people are he's read it for him before and he knows he's going to be on the show and i noticed something else that he, if he was doing cold reading that i thought was interesting because he went with the brown eyes and the brown hair which would fit two of the three people that were in front of maybe him. even all three i can't yeah. see the yeah, other woman the, yeah the other woman looks like she has colored hair so it's hard to say yeah well she's a she's a host so it could be yeah died well, exactly kind of a red it's kind of an auburn so it is, I mean, yeah. but yeah she's got several family members it, you know you've got several grandparents so it could yep. be could be there that's see good observation i knew you were going to do good at this okay <laughs> let's go to the rest let's see how far we can get but you kind of have to stop a little bit every once in a while yeah, to yeah. make sure uh people are falling oh, i think wow. she is coming through possibly oh, wow. i think it could be her uh do you know she would have had the dark hair and the yes. dark eyes okay mm -hmm. Um, then I want to ask you, I don't, so you don't know a lot about her. No, okay. not much at all. So I just, I, I need to tell you two things. First off, um, if, and you might not know as much because again, you're not, you, if you weren't as close to her, do you know connected to her, the name Jenny, 
And do you know the name uh, connected to her, Renee? These could be living or past people. Yeah, Renee is my aunt, my mom's sister. Okay, so your grandmother is coming through and acknowledging her. Do you know the name Jenny? No. That's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, let's just focus on what you do know. So you, you recognize the name Renee, mm -hmm. but that person's not passed? No. Okay, mm -hmm. for some reason your grandmother shows me something about spending more time or, or I don't know what it is. I don't know if, I don't know, I can't really explain what it is, but it's like something where your grandmother, but I do have to tell you really important, and this may be more important to Renee than to you. Mm -hmm. Your grandmother is telling me that she's been around her a lot lately, mm -hmm. and she's kind of guiding her. Um, and I think maybe your aunt has been thinking about her more or been wanting to be, feel connected to her. I feel like there's a longing that she misses her. And um, I feel like your grandmother is telling me, like, I don't know if you really talk to her a lot or whatever, but she's just kind of telling me if you can pass along that message. But she's also very connected to you, too. Incredible. You, yeah, your grandmother also watches over you, too. Even though you didn't know her, right. she still has a spiritual connection to you. Mm -hmm. I think my aunt was 12 when my grandmother died. Oh, yeah. wow. So she has some With sort of, mother. I don't know why it's now, but she's bringing that up and mm. stuff, yeah. Also, I just want to tell, um, also, I do have to say this too. Um, there's something coming through, uh, and I, I really think it's over here. I don't know. Okay, so um, let's pause because he's about to go to the next person. So that's hot reading. Anybody watching here, there is no way this man got those names out of the blue because that is like no wonder people say oh he's amazing yep. he is amazing because that is great and he would never know that there's no way he could know that absolutely no way he could know that so how does he know that adrian how does he know it <laughs> i'm guessing he found out either in talking to them beforehand or there's something on their Facebook page, or there's an obituary he looked up. There's lots of ways he could have found there's it. There's lots of ways of doing it. Yeah. He could he could have found it in many ways. Okay, so here's how he did it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just spoil the trick here right now, okay? Um <laughs> before you get into that, I I, yeah. I want to make a little observation that sure. I thought was really interesting to me anyway. When Ryan made the admission that his aunt was 12 years old when her mother died. Thomas John said something like, yes, that's what she's telling me. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's so smooth. You just don't even see it. I'm glad you pointed that out because you just don't see it. And it's that's exactly what they do. And it's it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tyler Henry's really good at that, too. Well, actually, Matt Frazier and Tyler Henry, a lot of them are really good at it. It's like a train. They're so fast at it that it just it, just, it, it rolls off the tongue. And I, I didn't even notice it this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what she just told me. Oh yeah. Well, now that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. She was just telling me that. I can't remember twelve years old. <laughs> so, I so it's just it. really good. Okay. So, yeah. what did he get? He got a grandmother coming through. I'm looking at notes. My, I have a team of people who does this for me. Okay. I'm not. I, I can do this myself, but I have a team of people that are awesome. Okay. A grandmother's coming through. She's very connected, but you either did not know her or you just barely knew her. She passed a long time ago. She had dark hair, dark eyes, a G name or a J name. And then Ryan claims the reading. That's me. Okay. She died before I was born. People always overshare, always try to explain. And they overshare, which allows the psychic to go, yeah, because that's what she was just telling me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ryan says Renee is his aunt, his mother's sister, and she's still alive. We got that. Ryan says that he never knew his grandmother. And then Thomas John says, oh, your grandmother wants to give a message to her daughter, Renee, and that Renee misses her. So these are all platitudes that, you know, of course, somebody wants to hear that. Yeah. And well, then, and not only that, but of course, it's highly likely that she's missed. Well, of course. Yeah, why not? Yeah. And, I mean, who whoever says no, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> you know of course she's missed or, or i'm glad she's dead are you just oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she rots and no nobody ever says that no of course not especially on tv no. uh, and then thomas john says the grandmother's also connected to ryan and protects him and that renee was 12 when her mother died okay that's what was there so it feels like a lot right but really it's not a grandmother of course his grandmother's dead a j name or a g name that's eh. Um, but Renee, oh, 
Oh, and also the other people's name. I forgot about that. The other two. There's oh, there's like Jenny or something. There was two other people who were mentioned. Um mm -hmm. uh Jenny and and he didn't know who that was. And there was another one. There was some other names he mentioned. Okay, well, here we go. Let me show you what we found or my team member found. Let's see here. Okay, let's start with let's start with this. Because what we found out, what my team found out is that um, Ryan's mother does not, has a pretty locked down Facebook page. So, but we found this. Thank you, Ryan. And this is the mother's first and last name. Once we get the mother's first and last, once we get the last name, if we wanted to find obituary in this person, we'd be there in a couple of minutes. It'd be so simple to find the grandmother's name. Just look at that last name, G-A-R-V-E-R-I-C-K. It'd be easy. So she's acknowledging here that her son is Ryan and that she's the mother. Okay. That's the first thing that we found. So let's see. Let me pull that back in. The next thing we found was let me see if it's this one okay then we went over to we found renee renee is the sister so his aunt ryan's aunt and her facebook page is wide open you know easy so you can have a lockdown facebook page but if we can if somebody can connect your family member to it it's just a quick just pop over to them right it's really simple God took you away from me when I was way too young. Yes, you like that. Yeah. Took me away from me when I was way too young. I was such a little girl. There's not an hour that my heart does not miss you. And these are brown-eyed, dark-haired people, you know, right? Not not, not much there. Okay. <laughs> if people want to read these things closer, just pause the video. Listen to it again and pause the video. And you can come back and look at these screenshots. Oh, here we are. Renee, Tommy, and family. And Robbie, Ryan, so Ryan there. I love these Easter pictures. So these, we grade out the people's names for privacy reasons. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. So there's, I think that was the name that was mentioned, Renee. Um, not, I can't remember they said Tommy. Do you remember they said Tommy? I can't remember that. Yeah. I remember oh. there was one other name for sure. Here, here we are, Georgette. He said, are you getting a J name, a G name? And right. he said, yeah, that would be my grandmother, Georgette. That's right. Like a really odd name to get, you know, if he yeah. was cold reading. Right. But yeah. He, Ryan said it. Yeah. So this is Renee. Renee is the daughter of Georgette. So there it is. And let me see. Was there anything else on here? I'm trying to remember. No, I guess not. Okay. So that's how he knew all that about. About. Um ryan's family let me make sure i've got my notes here i think that's how he did, he knew all of that right yeah exactly. that. so there wasn't really much there other than those people's names and, and we came up with all of them so and and one more than she didn't know so yeah. we got the the j name we got the g name we knew that renee was not passed we know that his aunt we know that okay yeah i don't think there was anything that she was young when she died okay so all the information was on his Instagram, I think, or was that Facebook? It looks like Facebook. Yeah, okay, it was Facebook. I'm not sure. Something like that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. One of the two. Memory is difficult. And that's, it's really, one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons these guys do well, right? That's it's why they're our really memory bad. Right. And so they don't do this. It, it's it, People say, oh, well, he had to memorize her whole Facebook page. No, you only have to memorize like, like three or four things. Yeah. And it's not that much. It's like a grandmother, a name, a name, a name. She died when she was young. They miss her. That and means. it's not unlike studying for a test it's a lot less information than studying for a test actually and you, you got to remember that thomas john has done thousands of these this is not like he's 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 glib he's good at it he's you know leaving the story it, he could have written a few names on his hand or something <laughs> ah, that's true <laughs> it, it really wouldn't be that much to remember i mean hey i've I, seen girls write answers or on their leg under mm -hmm. their skirt and they lift their skirt up Ooh. so there's lots of very interesting ways of cheating for sure i'm not sure that he used a skirt but there are ways yeah oh, yeah yes. nobody's <laughs> checking <laughs> them <laughs> this isn't a test um this is a oh. plug for a show 
Okay, no, I'm just looking I, to see. I think he, it wouldn't be that hard just to memorize those things. Um, I'm looking at the notes they said, and it's obvious that she was a brunette. You had to scroll back to find the mom had made this comment about uh, that she died young when she was a young little girl. And oh, yeah. And yeah. And then the, there was another picture I didn't show you that was about Easter time. And it had like all these other people's names in there, her nephew and, you know, just the family names that were on there. OK, enough to look real. OK, you ready for the second reading? Sure. OK, you can do this. <laughs> okay. now that you're all prepared and you're all expert at this yeah there we go yeah you're getting good at this now <laughs> okay and i don't i'm not even really sure who's bringing this through but i, I well actually it is a grandfather so it, i think it's for one of you um uh but there's a grandfather that's coming through i feel that like this would be on your father's side i do feel that you would have been very close to him i feel like you would have had a, a, a connection with him it's different than this you would have actually known him in life okay um and i feel with him also um that he's uh, it's definitely your dad's father though okay it's your dad's father and um i want to say he passed maybe in the last five, ten years. Maybe I want to go more to ten. Um, and I feel you being very close to him. And he's talking about something about, um, I don't know if somebody's moving or what's coming up about moving, but he keeps talking about moving. And he also is telling me, you must have a dog. Because he's telling me, this man is telling me um, that he actually visits a lot with your dog. Mm -hmm. And there'll be weird things that happen with your dog. And I think it's actually your grandfather um, uh, uh, kind of like visiting is what I'm feeling. Um, but I don't know which one of this is for with you. I, I, I think it's it it could be like for me. you. Yeah, could it be could me. be for you. Well, your grandfather's telling me that he's always around you. And actually that you're very intuitive and you'll have, you, you have feelings about him. Yeah. Yeah. And can I just tell you the weirdest thing? Tell me. When I walked in this building today, there was somebody that um, died a long time ago that used to work here. Okay, we're going to pause on that because that's going to come up in a second. That that freaking creeps me out and pisses me off when he does that. And he does this. Okay, so this is Lou. M A U R I E L L E. You said it so much better than I did. Moriel? Lou. Okay. Moriel Lou. Yeah, I think right. so. So according to the notes that I've got here, she got a grandfather, father's side. They had a close connection. She knew him in life. It was her dad's father. He passed in the last five to 10 years. Somebody's moving and there's a dog. And was it the grandfather? I've got the sense that it was the grandfather that was moving. Did I miss somebody understand that? Okay. Just something moving, moving, somebody moving. Okay. So. Uh, and he uh, makes the dog do creepy things. Or something, yeah, the dog is doing something with the grandfather or something like that. I don't know if I like to know about that. So if we, we, let me see if I can show you this. Well, she's got, um, she had a reading with another psychic and a lot of this information came through. I don't have the video in front of me, but this has already been done on another reading she had with a different psychic. And she talks about how she's grieving and things like that in that other video. Okay, she has... We know it's her father's dad and we know it's her father's dad because on another, on her Twitter account, she mentions that her, that her mother's father is alive. I believe so. So it's not much of a guess to know that um, the other one must be the one that's alive. Okay. So here's, here's a couple screenshots. And here's her dog. There we go. So she's got a puppy. Here's another one with a puppy. So there is a dog. And I, I find that odd too. What do you mean you have a dog? Well, what are the odds? <laughs> well, especially when you have it on online and you have pictures of it in public. It's... Have a dog or have a cat. You know, it's not like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you had a dog or you had a cat ah, that's that's not saying much. Yeah. It really isn't so the other things that i have written down here are that it was commonly known that she was going to be moving to what was it another network i think that's like all they knew about that and i don't know we didn't really say much on this one i don't think did they i didn't really see much just that about the grandfather and him playing with the dog <laughs> and 
started making him do unusual things, I think is how we put it, something like that. What, is, what do you think that means? I'm guessing this is where I leap to because some of the stuff that I've looked into regarding ghosts, etc. Mm -hmm. If a dog unexpectedly starts barking and there's nothing there, it can be attributed to ghosts. So I'm wondering if it's something like that that he's referring to where the dog suddenly starts barking at nothing. And to us, it's nothing, but dogs have really, really good ears. They can yeah, it could be anything that they're... So it could be anything they could hear that they're barking at they don't like. Yeah, I guess it could be not much of anything. You yeah. know, the other thing that I was thinking about is that, and I, I think of this a lot, when a person leaves the reading, because it's kind of motivated listening, you hear what you want to hear, when they leave this reading and they go home to tell their family, what do you? how do you think they're going to say it? Well, I guess if they're believers, then they will just go on and on about how accurate he was. And they'll uh, say, he knew yeah. the name, you know, they'll say it like. He knew my grandfather's name, or the, not the grandfather, the aunt's name. Oh, he knew mm -hmm. the grandmother's name too, didn't he? he? But with this next reading, there were no mm -hmm. names given. I don't think there were no names. The, the name of the dog was not given. The name of the grandfather was not given. At least yeah, sometimes given. it's what's missing that's more important than what's there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There isn't much missing. Oh, he says she's intuitive also. That uh, I, I love that. I get that all the time. The grandfather's uh, watching over you. Not creepy you at know all. It. Yeah. I, I don't find that creepy. No. <laughs> when I'm in the shower, when I'm in the bathroom. No, I don't find that or whatever or whatever. I find it kind of creepy when they say that. Yeah. Okay. Now this creeps me out. This bothers me more than anything because when you and, and Thomas John's done this several times and Matt, I think Matt Frazier's done it too. They know they're going to be on the show. They know what the show is, right? So these people that are sitting on the couch know they're going to get a reading and that their private life is going to be revealed so they're in on it right like you know they they know but when you bring somebody in who has no way of like i guess i should say defending themselves um or whatever i would be really pissed off if a psychic started talking about one of my family members on a show and i couldn't be there to be like you know that's bs get away from my family member that you just looked him up you know just be creepy okay so here we go this i think this is the last one and she greeted me at the front door oh but i don't know i don't know i don't know who she is her name's kathy mm. oh but she said she used to, she used to work here or something. Wow. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't know who she is, but she said she used to work here or work with people here or something. Oh. Um, but she died a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah, um, I, I, I may know who you're referring to. I can't think of her name, but. Mm -hmm. um, okay, is it yeah. either Kathy or Kathleen? Mm -hmm. But it was like she came right when I came here. It was wow. weird. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Do you know Tommy? Okay. I have a cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I, th I think son. your grandmother keeps she keeps barges. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I don't yeah. know what I don't know. Wow. So that's oh, interesting yeah. though that you didn't know her though. Yeah. But see, I always tell people that because sometimes you think of the main people that you list. Right. You're like, oh, it'd be this person because that's who's going to come through. But sometimes it's other people that you weren't as connected to, and they might see it as the opportunity to visit you or connect with you. Okay. Well, there's that Tommy that I showed you on the post with Ryan that we. Yeah that we forgot about mm -hmm. Th uh, Thomas John just said oh that's right I forgot to mention Tommy <laughs> that was on that yeah, the grandmother thing. keeps coming through oh. grandmother keeps coming through to tell me that I forgot to mention Tommy that I looked up on your Facebook page so how did he I, I'm assuming he looked up some kind of awful death yep regarding a person and He's I find this so ugly. awkward this is just really awkward because you know not only is it, um, oh, I need to show this on a different screen. Not only is it bad that he brought this person up, like as he walked into the room, this woman named Kathy came in and was telling him all this information. I mean, that's bad enough, but most don't know who she is. Yeah. That's they, they have some kind of a little recollection of something. I think there was a lady who used to work her. But and I don't I, know her name. I didn't know her. And 
And boy, do I feel really callous because I don't know anything about her. And that feels really, I mean, doesn't that, it just like, oops, you know, I don't that, know. I just Is that why he s switched so quickly back to the grandmother with the Tommy? Because there wasn't a recognition of the person? So I think it's because on. he was running out of time. Ah. And yeah, if one of the people had been more like, yes, it's so and so, mm -hmm. I think probably would have. But because then he would have more information that he would be able to verify. But they obviously didn't really know who that person was. And so I it... felt like it was awkward. It just mm -hmm. felt like you see the woman that in the middle, she's going, mm -hmm, yeah, I think there was somebody here named Kathy. They're mm -hmm. trying to make it fit. The thing is, is that he did get this wrong. He mm -hmm. said it was a long time ago. Right. Okay, and here's what we think he's referring to, and I'll show you who it is. Interesting. Her name is Kathy Walsh. Yeah. Oh. Her TV reporter dies with Huntington's disease at 63, and this was in 2000 and oh, where is the date on here? It's 2022. April 14th, 2022. So it was only months before this. Yep. And they don't remember this woman. Not a single one of those three. And she was a reporter. Wow. So, yeah, they didn't verify it. Time slot, so. I guess. Different time slot. I want to, hey, scroll back up. I'm just wondering if he somehow got, no, scroll, uh, yeah, hold on. Go down a little bit more. He, see, there's that number 1990s. I'm wondering if that's, he's, she was a reporter in the 1990s and that is stuck in his brain as it being a oh. long time ago just the, yeah like she hasn't been working there for a while but yeah i don't know maybe he yeah it does you're you're right you're right she was a reporter at the station in the 1990s yeah so she wasn't working there recently oh, that's why they weren't sure of her see she's since 2017 they've mm -hmm. been talking about her conditions so she's probably yeah. been out of this for a long time no wonder they didn't know her yes where she just died in 2022. You're going to have to do more of these with me, Adrian. Look how good you are at finding these things. <laughs> I, that, I mean, that's brilliant. But yeah, so they didn't really know her. They, they, they're they probably recent on there. And um, he might have thought that they would know about her because of her recent death and that it was in the newspapers. But obviously, they weren't that aware weren't of up it. On it. Yeah. But that feeling of... <sighs> it did feel awkward. <laughs> and maybe because he'd done that research on her and he said because you know they they're given just a very few minutes yeah. he knows he's only got a few minutes so um he knows that he's got these things to get in there he's got to get this kathy in there because he did that research on her and he found that that was okay and then the the tommy mm -hmm. so he he must have you know been oh i forgot about these people or he, this he isn't working i'm going back to what i know and i've got some more things up my sleeve that I can pull out. Yeah, I don't think he goes back to the the other woman, and okay. at least I don't have notes on and it. There wasn't a lot of information to the other woman either. As I say, it was very vague. It wasn't as clear and precise as with Ryan. Well, I'm talking about that other woman that's sitting at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah, no. read her the other day. I guess I don't know. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> She inputted, she said, oh, yeah, I think there was somebody that died, but I don't remember her name. <laughs> well, she, yeah, she died recently, but you're right. You're hundred percent right. She had not worked there for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it might've felt like a long time ago, or Thomas just kind of got that mixed up. You know, it's a lot yeah. to memorize, you know, 10 things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what my, my, my team member here, this guy who's, who's doing this analysis for me, he says, now, this is a person who's been following Thomas Don for a very long time. Oh, years, too. And he is telling me that what he thinks is going on in this it seems a little more typical of Thomas John is he's trying to be more big. Uh, because he's trying to make the thing sound like it. he doesn't. OK, this is 2022. Okay. I have been all over him. Since uh, I think the 2018, 2019, he knows damn well that he's got a reputation of being a hot reader. So trying to be more general so he can yeah, that. Oh. Right. He says that he thinks what's happening is he's he's being more a little more vague so that it isn't so obvious that he hot read these people. 
like coming right out with. Yeah. But more like, yeah, you know, I don't think you really knew her all that well, but you know, it's a little more vague. And I think he might be right because it, it does seem like he's probably being a, a little more, um, yeah, but it's it's still hot reading. It's yeah. still hot. There's there's no doubt about it that he found these people's information on there. And if anybody thinks that that was a real reading, I'm sorry to tell you that it was on a real reading. Yeah. All right, Adrian. So last thoughts. This is fun. Oh, you like that, huh? <laughs> oh, very breaking it down in detail. You know, a lot of people aren't doing this, and you know what? There are no women who are doing this. And there that's, I think, men. is really sad that most of the victims of this type of thing. Almost are all of the victims are women. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why it's not taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And the people who are debunking it, which there's only like 10. Mm -hmm. and, and going into this kind of detail, there's like a couple. And mm -hmm. the people who do go into any kind of detail or even try to debunk it at all are men. So I'm the only woman, I think. So it's nice to have another woman on here. Yay! I was, was like, happy. hey, all right. We had a couple other people. Well, it's so interesting. As I say, I I know a little bit just vicariously through you and from the Great Australian Psychic Prediction Project. But again, that's very different than watching somebody in the process. So right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, these are little longer format videos. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who are watching these I'm finding are... I think the skeptic community really does need to learn how to do this. And here, okay, here's my thoughts, Adrian. I think what's happening in the skeptic community is that skeptics don't know all this stuff. They know what hot reading is, cold reading is, and all that kind of stuff. But what they get is really flippant with people. And so what I think skeptics do is, oh, those psychics, you know, they're just throwing letters out there and just throwing things at the wall and the blah, 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 you know, and they, they make a flippant remark about how how and it comes off saying like you are so stupid for believing this you should know better you should know Actually, better how these dumb people, they're these people are master storytellers right and they, they and they're, they're to, yeah they're totally forgetting that this is an art it's a skill and they're engaging and they're charismatic mm -hmm. and they're some well are yeah well mm -hmm. thomas john isn't all that well spoken but <laughs> no but you can't believe the poor guy he I don't know. I don't know what it would be like if I could talk to the dead. I could probably be able to put two words together myself. So I try not to mess with his vocabulary because mine's not much better. Yeah, it's hard. But, it's hard not to have all those ums for sure. Right. So so I think that what's happening is, is that because the skeptics are so dismissive mm -hmm. of, of all of this and not explaining it. Mm -hmm. And then people who are getting readings are going, no, it wasn't like that at all. He didn't throw out a whole bunch of names and letters. He got stuff that was specific mm -hmm. and they have, they're having a different experience than what the psychics think. I mean, the skeptics think they're having. Right. So the skeptics are saying, oh, you're having this kind of experience. You're just too stupid to see it. And the psychics are, I mean, the um, believers, the people are getting the readings are going, that was definitely not what happened to me. And you are so arrogant and you're not paying any attention and you won't even look at the reading that I had done because most of them hardly ever get it recorded. Right. Um, and so there's this, you know, the mm -hmm. two sides can't come together because no, nobody's listening to the other side. They're not, they're not um, taking either side seriously. And I think it's a skeptic's fault. Because yeah. I think the believers would like to know what was going on. Absolutely. Nobody wants to be duped. Nobody wants to be conned. It's it's not, a, a as you would say, a choice. And it's not stupidity. Because I think there's no. lots of evidence that there are very, very intelligent people that have been right by this. And I think it's upbringing, too. Uh, you know, if depending on, I, I feel really lucky because in my household, if I thought I saw a ghost, my parents would say, well, let's take a look at that. <laughs> it wasn't in your belief system. You didn't. It wasn't were, in the belief system. You didn't grow up with demons and angels and life after no. death. So I'm, I'm, I feel lucky that way. So I'm fortunate. And I have to step aside and think not everybody was fortunate like that. And so, and even before, like when I, I when I explained it was psychics, I thought it, nobody took it seriously I still thought that they were really convincing you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. it's just 
it just takes that extra little hop to know to now realize that people really do believe it's not a big a big step into right. into that because they are very believable i think oh i i would have totally fallen for this i mean i would have totally fallen for this as a young person even into my 20s maybe i would have fallen for it i was raised religious i thought there was life after death oh absolutely so sure but you know a lot of people the the people who write to me that are writing after they've watched some of the videos some of them are just like their eyes are open like oh my gosh you got to be kidding me that's how it's done I didn't know that. And then some of them are like, you are just the evilest person in the world, Susan Gerbeck. How dare you even? And I had a reading once and it was so accurate. They told me things that never known. So therefore all mediums are real. And how dare you debunk them and do this thing? Wow. Yeah. You can understand that as well, because then they have, have to admit that they have not been getting messages from loved ones. Right. And I'm attacking their worldview. Yeah. Everything they know, everything they've ever known is now I'm attacking and how dare I? And I understand that, but you know, Hey, give me the benefit of the doubt. You found my video, watch it at least, and at least comment on it and say, well, and, and recognize it. Maybe this well psychic is not as a personal attack. You're just pointing out what's happening. It's, this is not a personal attack against the people who have had readings and believed it either. It's more information. Well, the, so I have a channel. It's got like 40 videos on it almost now. And you guys are watching it. So you know I have a channel. Please subscribe, you guys. I really would appreciate it if you'd subscribe. And please leave me comments. I love getting comments. Oh my gosh, I get up in the morning and look at my comments. Before I go to bed at night, I'm like, I want to read my comments. Throughout the day, I look and see if there's any comments so I can respond to. I love the feedback I'm getting from you guys. I learn from you as well. Um, but in this... 35, 40 videos I've had out here, I'm picking out different little aspects of what um, is going on because I don't think this is an easy, it's like learning a language. I don't think it's just as easy as saying, oh, here's what all the psychics are doing. I, I like to show the, the, just the little tips sometimes. Like you just said that one thing you said about, oh, see how whenever he said, the the sitter said, yes, my grandmother. And then Thomas John came back with, yeah, that's what she's telling me. I mean, just that little yeah. interchange right there. I, in fact, I did make a video on that. It's like 10 minute video on just that phrase because it's so common that it's used. And all these little things, like um, people will say, um, there's no way you could know my grandmother's name because she died before Facebook existed. Right. Get yeah. that kind of comment. You're yeah. like, yeah. why do you think she had to have a facebook page for them to find you you know and and well, or I, my I, facebook I, page is locked down how could he have found it it's like right. well how about your sister who's also on facebook who overshares well and not only that but ancestry.com and oh, newspapers.com i think yes dot com. doing the work that i am right now with sarah winchester Mm -hmm. I've looked up all kinds of interesting stuff about her and she died in what was it 1922 so Sarah can... Winchester from the Winchester Mystery House you people yeah, out there watching yeah. it's awesome so Story I, of amazing. I've been amazed at how much I've been able to pull up and not only that but when I google or not google but I put in the search different names and I've done it for family members too just out of curiosity all these obituaries come up and information from all public yeah it's it goes way back and it's not that hard to find is what i'm finding Absolutely. and that's i'm not even looking like you guys are I'm well, just... newspapers.com is just incredible it's like the trove thing if it hey if there's any australians watching we know what trove is yeah um <laughs> and we're glad it's being funded again yeah we know we're glad it's being funded it, that is an amazing that one's site. free that one's free that was that's an amusing site. I mean, a wonderful site. So Trove and newspapers.com. And there's probably others. I think there's uh, newspapersarchive.com. Right. There's yeah. all kinds of these things out there. I remember my sister is anti-social media. No social media. Don't put pictures of her up anywhere. And I did a Google search on her. On, not a Google search, but newspapers.com search on her one day. And boy, did it pull up stuff. Wow. Because... When you're when you're born, you got a you got a birth announcement. Yes. When you're when somebody in the family dies, you're mentioned in that obituary. Yes. 
And she was in clubs at school. She was on the honor roll. She was in track and field, graduation from high school, college. You're in the paper. You get in the paper. And if you can kind of narrow it down with an unusual name or a a not too common name and a place, you know, like you're like you're in a small town or a kind of small town, you can narrow it down. And so there was a story my sister had had uh, been hit by a car when she was like 12 and she she got she had the she got clipped by a car when she was out riding her bike and she got a broken arm i didn't know any of this this is like no idea my sister's pretty much forgotten it but it was in the paper wow. so if a psychic my sister wouldn't do this but if my but it trust me you guys when you're vulnerable you can fall for scams that you wouldn't think you would have fallen for or you don't fall for the psychic scam, you fall for a different kind of scam. Okay, there's a lot out there. Yeah. And so if my sister, just per se, had gone to a medium and they had known she was coming for her reading and they couldn't find any social media on her, but they found this newspaper record, then they would go and they would say, hey, lady, something about a, when you were a little girl, were you riding a bicycle and 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 you and a car hit you? And didn't you hurt yourself a bit? You know, and I think you broke an arm or something. My sister wouldn't know, have a clue where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. And even though my sister has no social media presence, I have an open Facebook page, open everything. Everything is wide open. So my mom, my dad, other siblings that are also my sister's hits Mm -hmm. are right there. Yeah. So it would be so easy to find out information on my sister, her, uh, even if she's not mentioned my mom's her mom. My dad's her dad. Well, and you said an interesting thing, I think. Well, and sometimes you- I do. <laughs> Let me write it down. Hold on. Let me write down this date. I'm going to circle it on the calendar. Is that something interesting? It's interesting? And that was, he For said, what? if it's an unusual name, like my last name is Hill. Very common. So he might not choose me, I guess. That's the other thing. Because it would be hard to find information. Harder. Because if you Google my name, there's an actress that was on Doctor Who, whose name is Adrienne Hill. Things come up, everything except me, right? <laughs> so you're getting more famous. Yeah. There's ways of finding out that information. I know your dog's name. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> yeah. If you know my dog's name, yeah, you might, you just might get me. You but, would be skipped. You would absolutely be skipped. Yeah, versus Gerbeck, which is a much more unusual name, or my maiden name would be also much harder or Hard, much easier to find right very unusual and my grandmother fishwick how would you like that one that would be so oh i would i would see that in a minute you know <laughs> and, and when we watch thomas john do readings on zoom almost all the people that he's picking off the of zoom that he's getting exact readings for are hyphenated names or they're not hyphenated they're women they're all women yeah but they're married you can see like a, a first name is common right and then they have like a middle name that is obviously a last name it might not be hyphenated, but it's like that and another name. Almost all of them are like that. It's like uh, Jennifer Zobalski's and Lewis's. You know, it's it's they're all like that. And and we go, oh well, that was easy. So you know, the middle name is probably a married name. I mean, a maiden name, like a and that makes it yeah. finding the obituary so easy. It's right. really simple to find her parents, her her family. It's simple. And um, when you're, when an obituary is made, oftentimes it will say, even his, even her husband's family, whenever somebody dies, they put in there, it'll say, it'll say, um, how, how does it, it almost always write it like, okay, let's say her husband's name is Jason. It'll say Jason, and then I'll have a parenthesis. It'll have the wife's name. Because it's like Jason and his wife, yeah, yeah. but they do the first name of the person and then they put the spouse's name in parentheses and so it pulls up on a google search i know because we do it all the time also if you create a facebook page before you're married whatever name you put on that account is up in the url of your facebook page check it out people you didn't know that did you (laughs) oh i didn't know that so we we can also find that on some people too um, it'll say, um, so whenever you're, when you create your Facebook page and you create it for you and your, 
maiden name because you haven't met that person got married then that name is up in that account probably not all the time and well, if it's a commonish name they put a number and that number is usually your birth year we see that a lot in email too so and my kids have done it I've known lots of people who do that. They put the year that they were born as the um, the last two digits in the email. Oh. So that makes it even more simple. My gosh, you guys, just hand it over to them. Here, <laughs> here I am. Come and find me. So have you ever see, run into that? I have. I didn't even know that existed. No. You, have you, to- you ever run into people who use their their um, um, some of I'll see like 1997 on their I- email. I've never paid attention to what those numbers were, but now I will. Sometimes it's a full birthday. Yeah, I have a number at the end of my email, but it's just because it's a cool number. It's the number 42, which is the meaning of life, the universe, universe and everything. So why yeah. do we need psychics if we already know the life, the meaning for life, the universe and everything? Well, you know what it says about you? Uh-oh. You're a nerd. I'm a nerd. <laughs> I love nerds. I am too. But that's what it says. If somebody sees 42, you're going to know immediately. This is a science kind of nerdy yeah. person who knows yeah. the life meaning in the universe. It's a joke. It's an inside joke. Yes, absolutely. So that tells a lot about you. And that's with cold reading. Mm-hmm. You know, we could we can cold read you and we'd know you're a nerd. I bet <laughs> you're into math. <laughs> I, I, I get this feeling you're really into math and, and numbers and well-read. Uh, yeah. I think you like to read <laughs> or watch movies, science fiction, science fiction. So, yeah. Something about science. Yeah. Comedy, comedy oh, science fiction. Yeah. British. Stuff. I bet you like British comedies. Look at how much that one number, that little tiny number tells about me. <laughs> and, and, and people, if yeah. there was nothing, yeah. you skip her. She and gets skipped. There was not one of those things that you just said is wrong. So cold read me, if you didn't know me, just looking at me and my background and what I say and how I talk, okay. what would you say? Okay, I'll try. I won't be as good as we do. I mean, you know me well, so just uh, pretend yeah. you don't. Okay, I, I think I get the sense that you're a gardener. You love gardening. And... I do. <laughs> I really do. No, but do you, I'm oversharing because that's what all sitters do. Yeah. I yeah. do. I love flowers. Did you see my flowers back there? Aren't they great? These no, are from my I garden. I didn't notice the flowers. They're from my garden. <laughs> this is broccoli right here, by the way. I know. They you went to seed. That. Yeah, that's crazy. See how you overshare? Yeah. What else? What else, Adrian, would you um, know about me? You like hot drinks. <laughs> no, actually, I don't. But that's that's a cup that's got dirt that, in it. Okay. I was thinking that was like a coffee cup over there. It so. is a coffee cup. But it's got dirt in it. Ah, okay. You don't like, you like my son. My son doesn't like hot drinks either. My oldest son. That's no. Great. What else? Um, hmm. And you can also get the flowers in the background too, huh? I, I sense that you don't really care about what other people think. Yeah. Cause I hardly got any makeup on my hair. My, <laughs> I got my sloppy clothes on. I was going to work in the garden today. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> You're missing something really glaringly obvious, Adrian. Oh, what else can I think of? Uh, well, I, I could go do the grandparent thing or the parent thing. You're missing a parent. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm in my 60s. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I must be. <laughs> so a parent, yeah, you're missing a parent, parent death. Uh, what else? could? What am I really missing? What are you, what are you getting from a background that you've missed? Uh, the shower curtain in the background. <laughs> no, you can't tell. Okay, I can't tell it's a shower curtain. Um, hmm. Everybody out there who's watching this right now, the five people who are still remaining on this are screaming at you. <laughs> okay, you got to tell me. It's getting late on a Friday night. Oh, the second, I got to put down the chat. That's what ah, I was oh, blocking. I didn't even see. Yeah, I was blocking. I had the chat little box still up. That's what it was. Close it. Oh, and you're... Uh, you're a caring mother. <laughs> I am a caring mother. All my kids would say so. I think, let me think. You have. They could be grandchildren because of my age. They could be, but they'd be I, wrong. A caring mother actually covers. Yes, absolutely. I'm getting some young men, young sons, young yeah. young boys. 
Yeah. Very I'm, attached I'm to getting you. boys, boys. That's right. Very yeah. attached to you and, and yeah. that feeling. And then also from my voice, you can tell my, you could see my age. Mm. You can tell my nationality is American. Right. And you I can tell that it must be on the Pacific coast because of the lateness of the hour. <laughs> if I was in the East coast. Well, and your accent, mind you, your accent sometimes gives away your Southern central heritage. Yeah, my, my, uh, your Washington and. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you, you have relatives. Yeah. Yeah. And you, obviously you do a lot of podcasts and look at that microphone. Look at that voiceovers. She, she obviously does. She's professional at this. She does voiceovers. Look at the things behind her. Mm. My gosh, you can tell that that creating good quality things is important to her, and that you seem to be a kind of person who would be uh, very particular about things. I bet you, Adrian, your name is. I would expect that. When something is, when you do something and if it isn't quite right, you do it over again. Mm. Whereas I don't, you, I have that feeling that you will try again to make it right because it's, it's important to you to have it right. Yeah, that's... And you're willing to go the extra mile, aren't you? To try to make something better. <laughs> yeah, it's very general, right? It's but it's it's well, it's beds. And <laughs> and you know, and you've been ill lately. So maybe allergies or some kind of cold or something. Oh gee, I think does this give it away? Two boxes of Kleenex. Kleenex. <laughs> and <laughs> is it hot drinks back there or what is that back there behind you? This this here? Back even back behind that. Just canisters with dog treats. Look, I missed that. You missed that. Right. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. You could have said, those are can you could have said you really like your candies. And I would have said, no. for my dog, yeah. No, those aren't candies. <laughs> that if it was candy, it'd be closer to where you could reach it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And then of course your accent. Yeah. And then the rose tinted glasses. You spend an awful lot of time on your computer. Yeah. And I have this feeling that. You spend so much time there that you you have found that you're almost even discomforted at times about being on the computer. Maybe you spend, uh, you work a lot in front of your computer and it's very important to you to make yourself as comfortable as possible. And if I didn't go any, if I didn't, if I knew better, I might even gone into the migraines kind of idea because you see or people who, you, you have pain in your head well but the idea of having those kind of glasses is supposed to help you with the with yeah. the glare and all that other stuff glare, whereas yeah. i don't have them yeah. so i could knowing what i know there's another I can reason say. actually that i choose these when i'm on video i'm going to show you this little trick i discovered i don't know what it is about it they don't have the same level of glare Oh, wow. Isn't that something? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> well, so, I get the glare and I have tried positioning my ring light yeah, everywhere so and hard. I cannot get rid of it. I can't, so I, the only thing I can do is do this. Now I have no idea where you are. Get a, get a pair of rose colored glasses and it will get rid of that. Does it make life better if you're looking through with rose colored it glasses? Does. <laughs> life is better. Do I look like a person who might've ridden a Harley for a while? No, I don't. I don't see that in you. Sorry. You'd be wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Though when you lift up your arms and you've got the flames, now maybe. But otherwise, no. No. Be bothered why, man. I wouldn't have known that about that old lady. <laughs> There's no way that old lady rode her Harley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a biker. Biker gal. <laughs> I, could train, I could change the engine on my car, too. That's awesome. That's just funny. All right, Adrian. So, so let me tell everybody goodbye. And then I'll end this video and you can hang around for a second. And we can, <laughs> I'll share some cheese me. So everybody out there, thank you so much. This has been really weird. I didn't expect to do this long thing, but that was a lot of fun. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to have Adrian back and do more of these kinds of things, because that was really interesting. And that made it so much more interesting for me. I'm more likely to turn out more videos if I bring Adrian or other friends on and we could do this like Watson kind of thing, explaining it. And then they come in and they have now Watson didn't always have really good observations and you did really well. 
Well, thank so you. I can't even call you like a Watson character. Here. Especially since it was like, Adrian, get on your computer. <laughs> How you doing? What are you doing right now? Adrian, what are you doing? What are you wearing? How you doing? Come, come do a video with me. I don't want to do it by myself, but I well, really want to do this video, but I really thank, do. So. Thanks for inviting me. It was fun. All right, everybody out there on YouTube land. Always fun hanging out with you.